folks. Welcome to the Culture and People cast. Today we have Amy Lynn Durham. Amy, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Of course. In a few sentences, would you tell us who you are and what you do? Yeah, my name is Amy Lynn Durham. I'm the founder of Create Magic at Work. I'm an executive coach, uh, certified from the UC Berkeley Coaching Institute. And I'm recently uh, certified in issuing the SQ21 assessment, which is um, the skills for spiritual intelligence in the workplace. Oh, you have me. You have me so interested. <laughs> I mean, look, I would tell everybody, like, I was raised by hippies, and my whole purpose in life is to restore humanity into our world of work. So you and I are aligned in this. So tell me what's your favorite thing about this work, this culture and people and moving that uh, forward in the workplace. My favorite, gosh, there's so many, it's hard to pick one, but I think my favorite would be when I see the connection that people make and the light that turns on when actual leaders in high positions see that it's not about the data all the time or what's on a spreadsheet, that it's about connecting people and bringing them together. Mm. Um, loneliness and burnout. Burnout is caused from loneliness often. And when you bring people together, the productivity and the profitability increases. And um, when you see the light bulb go on with leaders in that way, it's a big deal. Yeah. And, and yeah. look, I experienced, I had a staff member um, who had to leave last year and they share that openly on social media. So I'm not divulging anything out of, out of, out of turn, but they, you know, single person living in their house, you know, got fired from not fired, excuse me, got let go from one job with COVID and then experienced all that loneliness. And I will also tell you as somebody who, you know, homeschooled her twins for eight months and whose husband was in the house, you don't have to be alone to be lonely. Right. And that loneliness is such a big deal right now. So I appreciate all you're doing to sort of create this system that takes care of the whole person. Mm -hmm. Right. Because for so long, I think the employers are like, well, I'm just going to, you know, take care of this one piece of you that works so hard for me for 40, 50, 60 hours a week. And then I'm not going to worry about that other piece. We're just not going to talk about it. And that's not going to fly anymore. No, it's not. And employees are pushing for that, too. Mm -hmm. And what it what it's calling is it's calling for senior leaders in high positions to step up with courage and vulnerability yeah. into something they might not be comfortable with. And what's interesting about it is they actually heal themselves and become even better leaders. And then it ripples out to their whole entire staff because yes. of that. Yes. Yeah. And then we need the ecosystem to support that sustainability of that, right? Because we can, we can have personal breakthroughs, this is sort of my theory. We can have those personal breakthroughs, but then if the ecosystem is not designed to nurture and sustain that, it, it it won't, it won't work or we'll have to leave. Right. Which we see often happen. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. The system has to support it. And I think, I don't know if you agree with me or not, but I think 2020 was a lot about system shakeups too. Yes. Um, you know, a lot of the energy coming through, you know, it was, it, it had to happen. And I don't think it was going to happen that fast unless something drastic occurred energetically. Mm -hmm. And so system shakeups big time for 2020. So how are we going to proceed with that in 2021? Yeah. Question. I will say there's people that reach out to me and probably you, Amy, who, who say like, Oh, there's something going on in our organization. We just want you to come in. Like maybe they'll say we're not making enough money or our culture is broken or something, something that they'll pinpoint. And then when I come back and we have a little conversation and I'm able to observe and I tell them the work that's going to take, right? Like, here's what, here's the recommendations that I have for you right? Mm -hmm. to, to move forward, ever forward. And they sort of look at it and say like, oh, maybe we're not that broken. And, you know, on one side, I used to get so upset, like, no, you know, you, you know, you need this. And, and now I, I, I realize, right, as, as a, as a human, that it's a cost reward and their toes, they had not experienced enough pain and discomfort. So they were not ready, right? Their toes were at the line, but they weren't over the line. And I agree with you, 2020 pushed those over the line, mm -hmm. like it or not, right? So I'm hoping that we're going to see more of this collective movement, but it'll be up to the people to continue to demand that and hold their leaders accountable. I agree. Yeah. Isn't that interesting that we've moved into a space where employees are holding their leaders accountable in yes. that way? Yes. And, and what you have to be really careful with senior leadership is we... I, we talk about one of the skills my membership group is working on this month is making compassionate and wise decisions as a leader. How do you come in with compassion, but maybe not with empathy where you're taking on everybody's work, thinking you're doing the right thing, you know, giving your staff weekends off, but then 
you're working on the weekends. So then leaders try to do the right thing and then they kind of like burn out themselves because they don't have the skill sets as far as what they need to do. So it's a whole new world that we're kind of starting to step our toes into. And it's going to be interesting to see it, how it plays out. Yeah. Well, that's a great illustration. And I I can attest to myself as being a people leader for many years now that that happens, right? Where you will think you're taking one for the team and, you know, well, I'm going to, you know, be the example, but we, we can't do that. That's not sustainable for us or then for the team. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, a really cool article just came out yesterday from Ariane Huffington and she straight up said, it's not about stamina. It's about judgment. Mm. And I was like, yes, <laughs> you know, that's SQ21, that's spiritual intelligence. We're paying you in these high leadership positions because we want your judgment to be sound. Mm-hmm. I don't care that you worked all night and took on this huge workload. We need you to have sound judgment as a leader. Are you making compassionate and wise decisions? Mm-hmm. You know, can you help us sustain faith through difficult times? Yeah. Those are the things that we're going to be asking for. I love that. And that directly ties to what people historically call engagement. But, you know, we're talking about providing meaningful work so that people perform at their best, right? Make the biggest impact that they have. What are your thoughts on that engagement and what organizations can do about that? So just coming off this conversation right now, it's the leaders have to do their own internal work. That's the first step. I'm really passionate about that is leading by example and doing your own work. Um, EQ, emotional intelligence, spiritual intelligence, as a highly developed leader working on that first is the biggest step that you can take. Yeah. And you'll see that it creates ripple effects throughout your organization once you work on yourself. Yeah. So then, you know, they're, they're working on themselves and, and that's a, that's an, a practice, right? So I, I'm, you know, certified in yoga. I say it's like yoga. It's a practice. You don't really arrive at yoga. You keep doing it. Right. So knowing that it's a practice and there's the long game, <laughs> What is some tactical advice they can do in the short term, right? Something that they could start to implement tomorrow, maybe even around, I know you've already talked about the compassion. Is there a tangible behavior that they could execute to tomorrow or over the next week to start to operate in a more compassionate way? I say, as a leader, you're responsible to get uncomfortable, like we just talked about, and try something small. I wrote my book, I always say, for the beer drinking golf guy that I was working with that just needed some help. He just, he was a good guy, but he just needed a little bit of help. So, you know, start off small. If you are uncomfortable being vulnerable, it doesn't have to be this huge thing, you know, kick off a meeting, sharing a gratitude piece, kick off a meeting with going around and setting intentions, personal or business for the next coming month. So everyone can hear each other's thoughts. Um, I have a ton of different activities I have like that I share with my group. And when I do virtual um, coaching, teach, teach employees, bring in someone like you and I to teach, you know, emotional management strategies. I teach how to have an appreciation anchor, what, how to recognize when you're triggered in the workplace and have something to hold on to that helps you have gratitude. So having an appreciation anchor is huge. But um, those are little steps you can take. You can go to my website too, and there's a ton of ideas there. But I say just start. You have to have the courage and vulnerability to show up and maybe not say the right thing 100% or maybe feel a little vulnerable and maybe get a little laugh from your crew if you're not used to that. (laughs) But it's worth it. It pays you back 10 times over. Yeah, agreed. Oh, and we're going to link to your website too, to to share those good ideas that you have on there. But thank you for that. So let's do two quick questions before I let you go. First one is who else is doing good work in the ring around culture and people in the workplace that we could give a shout out to, or maybe even as a guest on the show. So I'm going to have to go to my mentor in this space, which is Cindy Wigglesworth. She designed SQ21 and the 21 skills of spiritual intelligence for the workplace. And she, um, is the head of Deep Change Inc. So she's amazing. And she was, you told me she was the head of HR for Exxon? Yes. So cool. Okay. Awesome. We will, we will link to her so that people can hopefully follow along with her as a thought leader too. Awesome. Great recommendation. And how about favorite resources of yours, Amy, that have advanced your own thinking related to culture and people? 
Okay, so I, I love Thrive, and I, I already mentioned Ariana Huffington. I, she just keeps popping up in the workspace. I really like her. I also like uh, Michelle Penelope King. She wrote the book called The Fix. She's really popular on LinkedIn. It was a best-selling book on Amazon, and she is for um, gender equity and equality in the workplace. She has some amazing um, things to share in awesome. that space, too. Awesome. Great yeah. recommendation. My integrator on my team um, is studying gender studies right now in her undergrad. So I'm, I'm, she probably already knows about Michelle Penelope King, but I will refer her to them regardless. So thanks for yeah, those shout to Check her out. She's yes, awesome. Yeah. For sure. And that's a passion, passion topic for me too. So Amy, thank you. Thank you for this. I appreciate your work. I know that you are relaunching um, your mm -hmm. book with an added section around what was the added section around? It's around shadow work. Mm, yeah. Awesome. Can you, for those who have not heard that phrase or, or maybe, maybe even misunderstanding that, what does shadow mm. work mean for you? So it's sort of those places that are hidden within you that you might not want to see and that you've kind of shoved deep down. And what happens is sometimes you project those feelings or those things onto other people. And so once you start digging in deep within yourself and bringing that up and shining a light on those and healing them, you won't project those feelings or those thoughts onto others. So it all starts back to what we were talking about at the beginning. The healing starts within ourselves. You want to make a change, change yourself, work on yourself and watch what happens. Mm, I love that. That's magic, Amy. So thank you for all you're doing, <laughs> Amy Linderham on culture and people in the workplace on this, this magic at work, right? Like that's a word that's sort of, um, it's often used in our household and we, we talk about it all the time that magic is everywhere and it, and really what we want to make of it. So thank you for bringing that to the workplace because now more than ever, we are blended in our whole person and that emotional side, that magic side needs to be able to show through. So I appreciate all you love that. Love that. Thank you. Of Thanks, course, Anna. sending everybody peace and progress.